The answer to this question is never universal. Firstly, because during their lifetime, a person belongs to a certain religious culture. So the moment of their death, the type of their death, and the method of leaving this world are directly connected to the religious culture in which they practiced and lived in. If someone is a devout believer, then respectively, they would have to observe all appropriate death rituals. Each religious system has its own channels of sending off the departing souls. Each system has its own distinct channels. There is no common space nor common method. Bardo do Tol, which we are talking about, is the Tibetan Book of the Dead. It connects people with their gods. And first of all, it connects them with the world created by Buddha and all Hindu deities that support this entire process. People that depart using this channel and this method must have lived and have been born within this system. As a consequence, during their life they are prepared to depart properly in order to avoid accidentally finding themselves in a different culture. Why is this needed to subsequently incarnate on the same land and in the same egregore? The same concerns Christianity, Islam, all existing variations of Christianity and the two variations of Islam, as well as any other pagan religions. This method has been tested or rather created quite a long time ago. A righteous life for the sake of a righteous death as a foundation for development was the task of the Egyptians. If you read the Egyptian Book of the Dead, then you'll see that it practically speaks of the same. That is, it speaks of how to depart in the right way. In order to remember that entire route, all the movements, all incantations, the names of all gods and spirits of the doors, the spirits of thresholds, and everything that is needed, it would take an entire lifetime. Therefore, any faithful Egyptian, as my colleague's jokes, was born in order to worthily die. And he's been getting ready for this process throughout his entire life. Essentially, what happened is that all religions adopted this method. You must live in a way so that you may die with dignity. In Christianity, particularly in the Orthodox Church, this idea is also very much prevalent. But each religion has its own rituals. And so people leave this world and are buried according to the rituals and rites of passage of, of the religion they belong to. And if the person is atheist, then she will be buried in a way that it is socially customary. The secular society that fostered the religion of atheism, which is still a type of religion, even though it is not related to faith, but rather to anti-faith, nonetheless it also is a belief, a belief in the absence of God. This too is a distinct counterforce egregor. And people who pass via this channel through this egregor would similarly carry out the rituals that are demanded by this egregor. They get stuffed into a crematorium, burned, and the urn is given to the family. Do what you please with it. And so the family does something. Some quietly bury the ashes with the rest of the family members, quietly, so that no one sees. Others do like the Strugatsky brothers, who scattered their ashes one after the other over the Pulkovo Heights. In other words, everyone has their own system of beliefs. Another thing is that every religion, every culture has this concept. A body cannot be left to just lay around. It must be utilized in a way or another. Well, our pagan ancestors considered that if a body came from nature, then it should also live into nature. So the body would be taken somewhere to the wild animals in the forest, under the roots, some would be taken to the water, depending on the deities they interacted with. In Zoroastrianism, there is such a religion, it was considered that earth should in no case be desecrated by a human corpse. On the contrary, it should be taken as high as possible, be left in the sun and let out to dry there by itself. If birds are going to peck at it, then it will become the bird's problem, but not into earth. It would not be allowed to bury anything into the earth for more than some 20 centimeters deep. Different religions would do it differently. The reasons for this have been partially mentioned. The person will leave this earth along the channel according to the rite of passage that has been used in the burial. What does the soul get from it? 
according to beliefs. Each religious system, each religious egregor and each religious layer has a distinct system for evaluating the existential volume of a human. Everywhere it is weighed differently and according to different parameters. For example, a person lived following the Christian principles, the Christian commandments, was a Christian and will be buried according to the Christian rite of passage, then she will naturally be judged, that is weighed, according to the parameters regulated by the Christian religion. Respectively, her good deeds will be highly valued and the bad deeds will be negatively valued. Whereas if it were a pagan person, for example, who slashed enemies all over the place, didn't hand out any charity, believed in different deities, which is categorically prohibited by Christianity because the first commandment says that God is one and there is no other God but the one, <coughs> and he did believe in different gods, then by living through the Christian egregor, reincarnating, he would be weighed extremely negatively. Whereas if he lives through his own egregor, his own channel, then the same actions will be valued very highly. And what if the person was initially Christian? Then I de-baptized myself and turned to the Slavic gods. And you will be buried according to the Slavic rite, meaning that you will have to clearly indicate it to the executors, those who will take care of the observance of the ritual, that they shouldn't bury you in a Christian cemetery under any circumstances, let alone following any Christian rituals and stuff. Because if the priest asks whether the person is baptized or not, and they answer yes, then he will perform the ritual. This is why there is not a universal answer to how to depart correctly. A general answer would be according to your faith. According to your faith. There were such cases among the representatives of the imperial Roman families when they were pagan all their life and believed in the ancient gods, then shortly before their death, they would get baptized really quick and leave this world. It is considered that the baptized soul has been separated from sin, meaning that it is cleansed of sin. By employing this smart maneuver, they managed to live a proper life and then at once nullified all their accomplishments. From a Christianity point of view, you're a good guy. You did the right thing. Whereas from the point of view of the ancient gods, it's the hardest slap in the face, a terrible insult. And believe me, they will find a way to make you pay for it. How can one help when a person is already dead? First of all, there must be a clear set of instructions on how you want to leave. Respectively, these instructions must be given to someone you totally trust. It happens very often that a grandma says, children, bury me this way. Grandma is Christian, for example. She wants to live according to the Christian rite. And the children say, no, granny, burying you will be way too expensive. We don't have so much money. Let us cremate you first and then bury you. From the point of view of the ritual, all rules have been violated, meaning that she will not be able to leave along the channel that has been opened. It would be fair enough if the beloved children are smart enough to carry out some kind of ceremony in the church. It would be good if they at least are smart enough to order a church service. It would be good if they are smart enough for that. But as it often happens, even that part isn't carried out. For this reason, the souls are tormented in this respect. And if they die and are aided in their departure incorrectly, then they get stuck in the purgatory for a very long time. And the purgatory is not always a pleasant place. And what about the fact that we cry about someone? I heard a theory that if we cry over a soul for a long time, then it gets wet over there and so on. From a Christian point of view, no. From a Christian point of view, any type of memorial service, any mourning over the soul, symbolizes that the person was good and valuable. And that in the eyes of the living, she has no sins. And the living are heavily grieving over her departure. It shows that a good person has departed. 
And it is considered that when the soul will be judged, this fact will be taken into account as a positive one. But there are religions that do not allow mourning for a soul. The soul should be let go. In such case, this fact will be taken into account as a negative factor. I repeat once more, the rules and rituals depend on the religion of the deceased. Not yours, but that of the deceased person. And when these rituals, the church services are done, does the existential volume of the person get taken away from her? Sure it does. I mean, it is not taken away directly, it is evaluated by the egregor. When your existential volume goes through an egregor, it is evaluated according to the norms and rates of the given egregor. Is it possible to go through this process without an egregor? It is, but to do so you have to establish the channel that you will use when you leave, the channel being what you believe in. Me, for example, when I die, I directly land into the moment of my next birth. There is no pause for me. What is happening in this case? With atheists, it always happens this way. It happens very quickly. Reincarnation happens immediately. On the one hand, this is good because you preserve this memory. When the amount of the time between two incarnations is short, the memory of the previous life hasn't been erased yet. This means that you don't pass through the purgatory, and purgatory means being freed of your emotional memories. And you remember it all. Another thing is that you practically never have a choice. You cannot control this process. This issue gets resolved at the level of the 15th arcana. You go where you are directed to go. Whether you will be able to resolve your tasks in that environment or will you be able to get on with your realization in that environment remains a question.